Welcome back to the wondrous emotional colonoscopy of organic chemistry. Today I'll begin teaching you about amino acids, peptides, and proteins. There are many, many slides required to cover this subject, but I promise that if you pay close attention, I will give you a shiny new monkey. Okay, that's a lie. But you will be much more likely to do better in class if you pay close attention, which might be more valuable to you than a shiny monkey. Only time will tell. To prevent myself from collapsing from fatigue, I've divided Chapter 23's lecture slides into two PowerPoint presentations. After studying the first half of this chapter uh, that's covered in this set of PowerPoint slides, you should be able to do the following. First, to define the following terms, dipeptide, tripeptide, oligopeptide, and polypeptide. Be familiar with the names, structures, and abbreviations of the 20 common amino acids. Now note, for this class you will not have to memorize them. Next, if given an amino acid's pKa values, draw its predominant form at a specified pH. Next, be able to calculate an amino acid's isoelectric point. And last, if given their pI values, that is, their isoelectric point values, identify individual amino acids' relative migrations during electrophoresis. So what are amino acids and proteins? Good question, my wondrous student who's now watching this over the internet and may or may not have actually asked that question. Simply put, amino acids are molecules that look like this one right here. They're called amino acids because they contain both an amine group right here and a carboxylic acid group over here. So we combine those two names into one magical word, amino acid. There are 20 most common amino acids found in all living things on Earth. I'll introduce you to these shortly. For now, suffice it to say that the only way in which each of these 20 amino acids differ from each other is the identity of this side chain R that's attached to our alpha carbon. We call these R groups side chains. Incidentally, you can draw amino acids in numerous different ways to indicate their stereochemical configuration. My favorite way is the way shown here. However, the author of our book prefers to draw them with the amine group pointing down like this. I want you to not freak out when you see it drawn one way or the other. They're both exactly the same molecule. The only difference is just that we've rotated around this bond right here to go from the structure on the left to the structure on the right. Amino acids generally bond together by having the amine from one amino acid condense onto the carboxylic acid group from another to form an amide bond like this one shown here. Now you can see that if I were to rotate around, uh, let's see, I think this bond right here, we could redraw this diamino acid as looking like this. It's exactly the same. All I've done is rotate it around here to poke this R group up and leave this R group here down. Now a chain or polymer of two amino acids bound together like the one I've shown here is called a dipeptide. A chain of three amino acids is called a tripeptide. A chain of three to ten amino acids is called an oligopeptide. Of up to fifty amino acids is called a polypeptide. And a chain of more than 50 amino acids is called a protein. So in essence, all proteins are is just one or more large chains of amino acids bound together in a specific form. So just as a house can be assembled by binding numerous bricks together in a specified fashion, a protein is assembled by binding numerous specific amino acids together in a specified fashion. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. As I mentioned earlier, there are 20 amino acids that are the most common amino acids found in all living things on Earth. This table from your book, Table 23.2, shows their structures, which I'm going to superficially introduce you to now. I want you to know, however, that I will not require you to memorize these structures in this class. That will have to wait for when I teach you guys biochemistry later on for those of you who take that class from me. So here are the first eight most common amino acids. Glycine, 
which has this structure here. And you'll notice that glycine's side chain is just a hydrogen. Alanine, which has this structure, its side chain is a methyl group. Valine, which has this structure, its side chain is an isopropyl group. Leucine, which has this structure over here, this is an isobutyl group. Isoleucine, which has this isomeric isobutyl group. Serine, which has this uh, hydroxymethylene group. Threonine, which has this group. And cysteine, which has this group right here. Now one important thing that I wish to point out here is that biochemists like to abbreviate amino acids names to enable them to be more ri uh, written more quickly and conveniently. Thus each amino acid has two different abbreviations. One is a three letter abbreviation, the other is a one letter abbreviation. Thus glycine up here for example could be abbreviated as GLY if you were using the three letter abbreviation or simply as G if you are using the one letter abbreviation. I should warn you though that not all of the one letter abbreviations are simply the first letter of the amino acid's name. That would be impossible since some of them start with the same letter as each other. Hence aspartate, which is shown right here, couldn't possibly have the letter A be its one letter abbreviation because that is the same letter that alanine, another amino acid, uses. That's why we give aspartate this uh, one letter abbreviation, letter D. Don't ask me why they picked D. So here are the next nine of the most common amino acids. Methionine, whose side chain is this one right here. Aspartate, whose side chain looks like this. I need to point out that aspartate is also known as aspartic acid. Those two terms are synonyms. So don't freak out if I say aspartic acid. Make sure that you don't get confused. Understand that aspartate and aspartic acid are the same thing. The next amino acid is glutamate. Glutamate also has another name, glutamic acid. Exactly the same thing. Asparagine, which has this side chain. Glutamine, which has this side chain. Lysine, which has this side chain. Arginine, which has this side chain. Phenylalanine, which has this side chain. Tyrosine, which has this side chain. You'll notice that tyrosine looks exactly like phenylalanine, except that it has a hydroxyl group in the para position of benzene ring to the amino acid. And here are the last three amino acids of our 20 most common amino acids. Proline, which has this cyclic side chain. It's the only side chain in which the amine group of the amino acid is actually part of the side chain. Histidine, which has this side chain. And tryptophan, which has this side chain. Note that this heterocyclic aromatic ring right here is called an indole ring. We might, you might remember that from one of our previous chapters. Tryptophan is the amino acid that has indole. I should mention here that 10 of these amino acids, which are shown with asterisks here, you'll notice that tryptophan is one and histidine is another, as well as eight others shown in the previous two slides, are considered to be essential amino acids meaning that we humans have to obtain them from the foods that we eat. This is because our bodies either can't synthesize them at all or can't synthesize them in sufficient amounts for our survival. For example, we humans must eat phenylalanine because our bodies can't synthesize benzene rings. However, we don't need to eat tyrosine because our bodies do have the ability to put a hydroxyl group onto phenylalanine to thereby furnish tyrosine. Thus, if we're eating phenylalanine, our bodies have the ability to convert that into tyrosine. That's why phenylalanine is an essential amino acid and tyrosine is not. Interestingly, although we can synthesize arginine, which is shown right here, our bodies need more of it than we can make when we're in stages of our life that have lots of growth. Hence, arginine is considered an essential amino acid for children, but not for adults.